ओके हाय आई एम प्रशांत भट्टाचार्य टुडे आई वुड लाइक टू डिस्कस विद द चैप्टर इंडिगो इट इज चैप्टर फाइव फ्रॉम फ्लेमिंगो फॉर क्लास ट्वेल्व स्टूडेंट्स let me tell you something about louis fischer the author of this prose piece indigo louis fischer was born in the year 1896 in philadelphia he served as a volunteer in the british army between 1918 and 1920 fischer made a career as a journalist and wrote for the new york times the saturday review and for european and asian publications he was also a member of the faculty at princeton university the following is an excerpt from the book the life of mahatma gandhi you know the life of mahatma gandhi by louis fischer is one of the best known autobiography in the world when i first visited gandhi in 1942 at his ashram in sevagram here i refers to louis fischer in central india he said i will tell you how it happened that i decided to arms the departure of the british it was in 1970 so louis fischer visited gandhi in the year 1942 at his shivagram ashram and where gandhi ji told him about that how he decided to arms the departure of the british in the year 1970 before that Uh, i would like to uh, before the second paragraph i would like to tell you what is indigo indigo is nothing but the dying agent dying agent means dying color by which we can white uh, give the white whitish uh, object any white object to be more whitish so at that time uh, synthetic indigo was not there indigo plants was there and people used to cultivate in bengal and bihar uh, today's uh, jharkhand also uh, people used to cultivators used to uh, cultivate indigo uh, which was very popular and britishers used to take this indigo to the european market for selling and they used to make hefty uh, a huge profit out of it so he had gone to december in 1916 annual convention of the indian national congress party in lucknow there were 2301 delegates and many visitors during the proceedings gandhi recounted a peasant came up to me looking like any other peasant in india poor and emaciated emaciated and said i am rajkumar shukla i am from champaran and i want you to come to my district gandhi had never heard of this place it was in the foothills of the towering himalayas near the kingdom of nepal so in the year 1916 december uh, month there was the annual convention of indian national congress in lucknow where rajkumar shukla a poor peasant and a representative of the champaran villagers came to meet gandhi there to explain about the incidents and to take mahatma gandhi to see the problems of the share proppers there in his village under an ancient arrangement that champaran peasants were share proppers so what was the ancient arrangement you know ancient arrangement refers to an agreement between the landlords and the share proppers for cultivation of indigo for a longer duration and they used to give an advance money to the poor cultivators to cultivate in their most fertile 15% land they used to give as an advance and after that they means the poor farmers had to sell all the products all the crops to the europeans the landlords and this was referred to as ancient arrangement rajkumar shukla was one of them he was illiterate but resolute resolute means adamant jiddi he was illiterate but resolute he had come to the conversation to complain about the injustice of the landlord system in bihar and somebody had probably said speak to gandhi 
here speak to gandhi why louis fisher said this because gandhi ji was one of the most popular leaders in india and people used to believe him as masiha or the savior because they used to believe that if gandhi ji heard any of their complaint he can solve the complaint he can solve the issue so rajkumar shukla went to gandhi ji gandhi told shukla he had an appointment in kanpur here kanpur spelling is very significant c a w n p o r e c a w n p o r e why such spelling these days we call as kanpur k a n p u r but britishers used to call as their own pronunciation and they used to spell like c a w n p o r e and was also committed to go to other parts of india shukla accompanied him everywhere then gandhi returned to his ashram near andavad shukla followed him to the ashram for weeks he never left gandhi's side that means rajkumar shukla was very much adamant to take gandhi to his own place that is champaran but he was not getting a date that's why he begged to gandhi fix a date sir impressed by share proper's tenacity the story gandhi said i have to be in calcutta on such and such a day come and meet me and take me from there in this time now after the adamancy looking at the adamancy of this gentleman rajkumar shukla gandhi ji uh, said that yes such and such date he will be there in kolkata today's kolkata previously calcutta and there from Uh, he will be uh, gandhi ji uh, will accompany uh, shukla will accompany gandhi ji and he will take him months passed shukla was sitting on his hunches at the appointed spot in calcutta when gandhi arrived he waited till gandhi was free then the two of them boarded a train for the city of patna in bihar there shukla led him to the house of a lawyer named rajendra prasad who later became president of the congress party of india so here gandhi ji first stepped to rajendra prasad's house here this rajendra prasad is no one but the popular lawyer popular congress party man and president of the congress party and finally he got also the highest uh, position of uh, the officer of india that is the president of india he became and rather but unfortunately rajendra prasad was not at that time in his home so uh, they were received by uh, their servants and their servant uh, their servants mistook him as another peasant uh, gandhi ji was considered as a peasant by them because of his uh, very simple clothes and accompanied by rajkumar shukla so they understood that this gentleman is also a peasant and he is an untouchable though it was a mis- mistake Gandhi decided to go first to Mujafarpur which was en route to Champaran en route means on the way to Champaran to obtain more complete information about conditions that then Shukla was capable of imparting he accordingly sent a telegram to professor J V Kriplani so J V Kriplani who was this gentleman he was the professor of the arts college in Mujafarpur whom he had seen at Tegar's Shanti Niketan school the train arrived at midnight on 15th april 1970 kriplani was waiting at the station with a large body of students gandhi stayed there for two days in the home of professor malkani a teacher in a government school so gandhi stayed there for two days at professor malkani's house who was a teacher in a government school it was an extraordinary thing in those days gandhi commented this line is very important please underline this line why because this statement is very important extraordinary thing why extraordinary because at that time gandhi ji was an advocate of home rule league movement and that's why to give shelter to this gentleman gandhi ji uh, as a home rule advocate uh, whoever is it he will be arrested by the british police because it was a crime in their according to their law so the news of gandhi's advent and of the nature of his mission spread quickly 
through Madhyapurpur and to Champaran. Sharecroppers from Champaran began arriving on foot by convenes to see their champion. Who is this champion? Here the champion is obviously Mahatma Gandhi. They thronged there, they gathered there to see once their popular leader Mahatma Gandhi. Uh, so uh, the, the poor peasants uh, came there and along with them uh, also Mujafarpur lawyers called on Gandhi to brief him. They frequently represented peasant groups in the court and they told him about their cases and reported the size of their fee. So Gandhi cheated the lawyers for collecting big fee from the sharecroppers. Actually when Gandhiji came to know that these lawyers are collecting um, uh, big fee from the sharecroppers, poor sharecroppers, Gandhiji became very angry. Gandhiji said that they should not do so. Gandhi scolded them. Cheated means scolded them. He said, I have come to the conclusion that we should stop going to law courts. Here, why Gandhiji consider this? Because if they go to the law court, it would be a meaningless effort because at that time, all the judges of the court were European or the British judges. They, it was evident, it was very um, um, matter of fact that these judges of the courts will never give any favorable ju judgment towards our peasants, poor peasants. So it was nothing but a useless job. So that's why Gandhi is asked the lawyers to stop going to law courts. Taking such cases to the courts does little good. Where the peasants are so crushed and fear stricken, law courts are useless. The real relief for them is to be free from fear. Underline this line, the real relief for them is to be free from fear. Why? I am asking you to underline because Gandhiji's main intention to go to Champan was to give a, give a strong backbone to protest against the injustice by the European injustice uh, of the share, uh, landlords, European landlords and the British landlords and real relief, he knew that real relief for them is to be free from fear. They used to scare, they used to fear, they used to afraid their landlords, European landlords. That's why the, uh, the Gandhiji reached there. Most of the arable land, here arable means uh, land which is meant for agriculture. So most of the arable land in the Champaran district was divided in the, the large estates owned by Englishmen. So who were the owner of this land, huge land or estates of all the European Englishmen and worked by Indian tenants and all the um, cultivators or the farmers were Indians. The chief commercial crop was indigo. The landlords compel all tenants to plant 3 twentieths or 15% of their holdings with indigo and surrender the entire indigo harvest as rent. This was done by long term contract. So the contract between the sharecroppers and the landlords were, uh, were not, the contracts were not short term. All the long term contracts so that even if they want to wish the, to break the agreement, they will not be able to do so. That's why they used to uh, uh, have a long term contract. Presently, the landlords learned that Germany had developed synthetic indigo. They thereupon obtained agreements from the sharecroppers to pay them compensation for being released from the 15% arrangement. So, here what happened? Uh, it came like a uh, bolt from the blue and it came like a uh, blessings in disguise. What is that? That Germany had already developed synthetic indigo and in the competition in the European market, natural indigo from India became very uh, less and the demand of the uh, uh, natural indigo became gradually decreased there. And that's why the European landlords uh, no more were interested in um, cultivation, indigo cultivation. And at that moment, the sharecroppers here in India, when they came to know this, they demanded the compensation from their landlords. But it was no vain, it was of no result. And uh, at that time, Gandhiji arrived in Champaran. He began by trying to get the facts 
First, he visited the secretary of the British Landlords Association. The secretary told him that they could give no information to an outsider. Please underline this line. The secretary told him that they could give no information to an outsider. See, outsider, uh, who is outsider? Here, Gandhi is being addressed as outsider. Well, while if we think twice, we will see that the European landlords or the British people are here as an living here, used to live here as an outsider. But the, here, Gandhi is being called as an outsider. So Gandhi answered that he was no outsider. Next, Gandhi called on the British official commissioner of the Trihu division in which Jambaran district lay. The commissioner Gandhi uh, uh, reports proceeded to bury me and advised Fortway to leave through. Bari means insulted Gandhiji and asked Gandhiji to leave Trihu division. Gandhi did not leave. Instead, he proceeded to Motihari, the capital of Champaran. Several lawyers accompanied him. At the railway station, a vast multitude greeted Gandhi. He went to a house and using it as headquarters, continued his investigations. A report came in that a peasant had been maltreated in a nearby village. So here in this paragraph, Gandhiji wanted to go to a nearby village hearing that a village peasant is being tor tortured or maltreated. Gandhi decided to go and see. The next morning he started out on the back of an elephant and he had not proceeded far when the police superintendent's messenger overlook him, overtook him and ordered him to return to town in his carriage. Gandhi complied. Here complied means obliged. Gandhi listened to it and the messenger drove Gandhi home where he served him with an official notice to quit Champaran immediately. Quit means to leave Champaran immediately. Gandhi signed a receipt for the notice and wrote on it that he would disobey the order. And Gandhiji here disobeying the order. You will see that sir, why it is once is complied and one uh, on another hand he is disobeying. See the fact is that when Gandhiji was going to the village to see the torture against a peasant, he came back in the uh, in his own house and uh, um, because Gandhi considered that had he even if he uh, will try to go there then what will happen what may happen it may happen that uh, there will be a clash between the villagers and the police and there will be uh, maybe um, people will be injured out of it and they will even uh, they can uh, they, the police firing they can be victim of the victims of the police firing. So, Gandhiji, knowing this, Gandhiji decided not to go to the village and thereupon he, on the receipt, he wrote that he is disobeying the order. In consequence, Gandhi received a summon and as a result, Gandhi, next day, Gandhi uh, had to report to, to the court. All night, Gandhi remained awake. He telegraphed Rajendra Prasad to come from Bihar with influential friends. He sent instruction to the ashram. He wear, wear means telegram. He telegraphed a full report to the Viceroy. Morning found the town of Motihari black with peasants. Here black with peasants, you know, what is that? That means thousands of thousands of people came from, um, the peasants came from different villages, from different areas to see the, to, in protest against the, uh, this, uh, this uh, happening. They did not know Gandhi's record in South Africa. They had merely heard that a Mahatma who wanted to help them was in trouble with the authorities. Their spontaneous demonstration in thousands around the courthouse was the beginning of their liberation from the fear of the British. Underline around the courthouse was the beginning of their liberation from fear of the British. The officials felt powerless without Gandhi's cooperation. He helped them regulate the crowd. He was polite and friendly. He was giving them concrete proof that their might hitherto dreaded and unquestioned could be challenged by Indians. The government was baffled. Baffled means uh, astonished very much um, baffled. The prosecutor requested the judge to postpone the trial. Apparently, the authorities wished to consult their sub superiors. Gandhi protested against the delay. He read a statement pleading guilty. He was involved. He told the court in a conflict of duties on the one hand not to set a bad example as a lawbreaker. So, as a, uh, as a uh, good citizen, he did not want to break the law, existing law. So, on the other hand, to render the humanitarian and national service for which he had come, he disregarded the order to leave, not for want of respect for lawful authority, but in obedience to the higher law of our being, the voice of conscience, 
he asked the penalty due. The magistrate announced that he would prolong sentence after a two-hour recess and asked Gandhi to furnish bail for those 120 minutes. Gandhi refused. The judge released him without bail. So here Gandhi once again defeated the British law. When the court can convene, the judge said he would not deliver the judgment for several days. Meanwhile, he allowed Gandhi to remain at liberty. Rajinder Prasad, Bridge Krishna Babu, Maulana Majroor Hawk, please underline this line, and several other prominent lawyers had arrived from Bihar. Underline this till Bihar. Why? Because these three people, Rajinder Prasad, Bridge Krishna Babu, and Maulana Majroor Hawk, were the three prominent disciples of Mahatma Gandhi, who uh, were also um, uh, accompanied with several other prominent lawyers, had arrived in Bihar. They conferred Gan with Gandhi. What would they do if he was sentenced to prison? Gandhi asked why the senior lawyer replied they had come to advise and help him. If he went to jail, there would be nobody to advise and they would go home. So here, this whole people uh, came in favor of uh, Mahatma Gandhi's movement, Mahatma Gandhi's, uh, uh, Mahatma Gandhi's advice. And what about the injustice to the sharecroppers? Gandhi demanded. The lawyers withdrew to consult. Rajendra Prashad has recorded the upshot of their consultations. They thought amongst themselves that Gandhi was totally a stranger and yet he was prepared to go to prison for the sake of the peasants if they, on the other hand, being not only residents of the adjoining districts but also those who claim to have served these peasants should go home. It would be shameful deception. So a kind of uh, self-repentance came in the minds of the people that Gandhi being the outsider means the, uh, outside the um, Champaran uh, border or the Champaran district. He is not from Champaran yet he came here, he is protesting. So why not they will protest against this. They accordingly went back to Gandhi and told him they were ready to follow him into jail. The battle of Champaran is won. Underline this line, the battle of Champaran is won. Question comes in the board exam. He exclaimed, then he took a piece of paper and divided the group into uh, pairs and put down the, the order in which each pair was to quote as. Several days later, Gandhi received a written communication from the magistrate informing him that the lieutenant governor, governor of the province had ordered the case to be dropped. Civil disobedience had triumphed. Underline this line. Civil disobedience had triumphed the first time in modern India. Underline. Gandhi and the lawyers now proceeded to conduct a far flung inquiry into the grievances of the farmers. Deposition, depositions by about 10,000 peasants were written down and notes made on other evidence. Documents were collected. The whole area throbbed with the activity of the investigators and the vehement protest of the landlords. In June, Gandhi was summoned to Sir Edward Gate. Underline this line, Sir Edward Gate, the Lieutenant Governor. Lieutenant Governor. Before he went, he met leading associates and again laid detailed plans for civil disobedience if he should not return. Gandhi had four protracted interviews with the Lieutenant Governor, who as a result appointed an official commission of inquiry into the Indigo share proffers. Situation and the commission consisted of landlords, government officials, and Gandhi as the sole representative of the peasants. Gandhi remained in Champaran for an initial uninterrupted period of seven months and then again for several shorter visits. The visit undertaken casually on the entreaty of an unlittered peasant in the expectation that it would last a few days occupied almost a year of Gandhi's life. The official inquiry assembled a crushing mountain of evidence against the big planters and when they saw this, they agreed in principle to make refunds to the peasant. So, the, at that moment what happened? Gandhiji uh, became the um, sole member of the commission uh, against the injustice of the sharecroppers and the commission found that yes, they should be given compensation and finally they agreed. But how much must we pay? They asked Gandhi. But they asked Gandhi ji how much they have to pay as compensation. They thought he would demand, it, demand repayment in full of the money which they had illegally and deceitfully extorted from the sharecroppers. He asked only 50%. So Gandhi ji asked only 50% adha. But there he seemed adamant. Writes Reverend J.J. Hogg, a British missionary in Champaran, who observed the entire episode at close range. Thinking probably that he would not give way, 
the representative of the planters offered to refund to the extent of 25%. So finally, these uh, it was decided that they will be given 25%. Uh, compensation and to his amazement, Mr. Gandhi took him at his word, thus breaking the deadlock. Underline, thus breaking the deadlock. What is the deadlock? Deadlock is that a situation came regarding paying the compensation to the farmers that whether they should be given 50% or what. But finally, they agreed to give 25% compensation to the share properties. It is un, uh, under the and, and in, in this way, the deadlock was broken, right? Deadlock means a condition where uh, no one can decide what to be done, uh, what is to be done. This settlement was adopted unanimously by the commission. Gandhi explained that the amount of the refund was less important than the fact that the landlords had been obliged to surrender part of the money and with it part of their prestige. So till Gandhi, till prestige from Gandhi explained, you please underline, it is very important. Actually, the question comes why Gandhiji took 25% compensation uh, at, at the last moment. Because of that, Gandhiji thought that it would be a wise decision to take 25% compensation because these people, the landlords, European landlords used to believe that they were above the laws and they need not have to comply with the existing law or rules. It is, they used to think that it is only mean for the native people. But at this hour, at this point of time, they bowed their head, they, they put down their head and they thought that yes, it is a legible claim and they should pay at least 25% to them. So, Therefore, as far as peasants were concerned, the planters had behaved as lords above the law. Now the peasants saw that he had rights and defenders. He, le he learned courage. Events justified Gandhi's position. Within a few years, the British planters abandoned their estates. Abundance means to leave the press. They leave the estates which reverted to the peasants. Indigo sharecropping disappeared. Gandhi never contented himself with large political or economic solution. Here another work starts. Here the episode of Indigo is finished but still Gandhi thought that there some work is to be done for the poor farmers and that's why he saw the cultural and social backwardness in the Champaran villages. He Gandhi discovered that they are very much backward and they are, uh, the people of Champaran are very much culturally and socially backward and therefore he appealed for the teachers Madhav Deshai and Narahari Pari, two young men who had just joined Gandhi as disciples and their wives volunteered for the work. Several more came from Bombay, Pune and other distant uh, parts of the land, Devdas, Gandhi's youngest son. Uh, who arrived from Ashram and so did Mrs. Gandhi. Here, Kasturba Gandhi is uh, referred to here. Primary schools were opened in six villages. Kasturba taught the Ashram rules on personal cleanliness and community sanitation. Health conditions were miserable. Gandhi got a doctor to volunteer his services for six months. Three medications, uh, medicines were given to them, especially uh, uh, for uh, what is that? Castor oil for any coated tongue. Anybody with malaria fever received quinine and uh, plus castor oil and anybody with skin eruptions received ointment plus castor oil. Gandhi noticed the filthy state of women's clothes. He asked Kasturibai to talk to them about it. Actually, Kasturibai visited uh, a, a one woman's house and found that these women had only one shari to wear. They did not have power, money power to buy uh, instead of one sari to two saris or something like that. So uh, they were very much poor. Gandhiji extended their help and Kasturibai also uh, extended her help to them. During his long stay in Champaran, Gandhi kept a long distance watch on Ashram. He sent regular instructions by mail. Gandhi here also very much concerned about his own Ashram. He used to send telegrams, instructions to them. Once he wrote to residents that it was time to fill in the old latrine trenches and be the new ones, otherwise the old ones would begin to smell bad. Here, he, uh, for the personal cleanliness, here and sanitation, 
he taught them this lesson the champaran episode was a turning point in gandhi's life please underline this line the champaran episode was a turning point in gandhi's life question comes from this line why champaran episode was a turning point in gandhi's life this question will come if i am getting time i will be discussing about this in the next episode what i did he explained was a very ordinary thing i declared that the british could not order me about in my own country but champaran did not begin as an act of defiance it grew out of an attempt to alleviate the distress of large numbers of poor peasants this was a typical gandhi pattern so here gandhian policy is being policy is being followed his politics were intertwined with the practical day to day problems intertwined means uh, internally bounded up with the practical day to day problems of the millions he was not a loyalty to abstractions it was a loyalty to living human beings in everything that means gandhi did not ever consider that abstract ideas will work the best but he rather he thought that it was the human beings whose cleanliness whose welfare is to be given the first priority in everything gandhi did moreover he tried to mold a new free indian who could stand on his own feet and thus make india free please underline from in everything to free this was the objective of, of mahatma gandhi early in the champaran action charles prerer and rus the english pacifist who had become a devoted follower of mahatma gandhi he is a charitable man he is charles he is one of the disciple who charles prerer and rus he came to bid gandhi farewell before going on a tour of duty to fiji island gandhi's loyal friends thought it would be a good idea for andrews to stay in champaran and help them they thought this disciple this people thought that if andrew extends his help or then or andrew join in their movement and then it would be a great thing but he said you think that in this equal fight it would be helpful if we have an englishman on an, on our side this shows the weakness of your heart the cause is just and you must rely upon yourselves to win the battle you should not seek a prop in mr andrews because he happens to be an englishman so the underline this line he had read our minds correctly rajendra prasad comments and we had no reply gandhi in his way taught us a lesson in self reliance underline self reliance self reliance indian independence and help to share properties were all bound together so these are the teachings of mahatma gandhi before concluding this chapter i would like to say that you please read this chapter once again so that you gain the total idea of this chapter and believe me or not if you are going through once after my discussion it would be very helpful to take to write the board exam nicely thank you all the best thank you and have a nice day